Ha 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 ha! Oh, sneaky! It's one of those little thin HDMI outputs. No, it doesn't work. The DJI Goggles 2 doesn't have an HDMI output. And unlike the V2 goggle, which was hacked and rooted and made to output HDMI via USB to an Android phone, to any all kinds of devices, the Goggles 2 have not been hacked and rooted. And the only official way to get HDMI out of the DJI Goggles 2 is to spend an exorbitant amount of money on the DJI Pro Controller. Now, if you already own the Pro Controller, more power to you. You lucky SOB. But for the rest of us today, we are going to do something that I have said was impossible. And in my defense, for a long time, it was impossible, but it's not impossible anymore. And today, I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to get HDMI out from the DJI Goggles 2. And even if you have the V2 Goggles, we're going to build a little device called Cosmo Streamer that may be the best way to get video out of any DJI goggle, V2 or Integra or G2. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. Cosmo Streamer actually existed before the DJI V2 goggles and the goggles too. It has been a project designed to get video out of DJI devices for a long time. Now, in the past, the devices were things like the DJI Pocket 2, the DJI Pocket Osmo, and so forth. But when the V2 goggles and then the Goggles 2 and Integra came out, Cosmo Streamer team went to work, and as far as I know, they're the only ones who have made it possible to do this. Now, Cosmo Streamer can run on various different kinds of devices, but for the sake of this video, we're going to be installing Cosmo Streamer on this Raspberry Pi 4. And in case you're wondering, can I save a couple bucks and maybe use a Raspberry Pi 3? Uh, if you're using the V2 goggles only, then I believe you can use the Raspberry Pi 3, but for the goggles 2 and the Integra, you have to use the Raspberry Pi 4. Fortunately, Raspberry Pis are not as expensive as they were a year or two ago. I got this one for about 60 bucks. And in addition to the Raspberry Pi, I have purchased this. This is a PoE hat. Uh, PoE means power over Ethernet, and a hat is basically just an expansion board for a Raspberry Pi that sits on top of it, hence hat. Um, PoE means that we will be able to power the Raspberry Pi over the same Ethernet port that we would use to get data and stream over the internet or many of the other things that the Cosmos Streamer can do. You can pro power the Raspberry Pi via USB and you can power the Raspberry Pi simply with a DC input on the, the five volt and ground pins. Um, but there are a couple little quirks with doing that and I thought that I would explore the capability of doing it with PoE. Uh, you, you, we'll look at the other ways of doing that as we go through the video. Now, if you, like me, splurged on the PoE hat for your Raspberry Pi, then all you need to do to power it up is plug in an Ethernet cable. That the other end of the Ethernet cable is plugged into a device that provides PoE power. Um, I have an Ethernet switch that provides PoE and it is just ready to go. If you don't have that, you could get one of these. This is an Ethernet power injector. It plugs into the wall on one side and has data in and power out on the other and it will also power this device. But uh, there's a couple of downsides to this. And the first is that, well, not everybody may have a PoE power source like me, I used to work in networking and I just have this stuff laying around my house. Um, the other thing is that if you're going to be out in the field, if you need a battery based supply, then PoE isn't the greatest option. Yes, there are PoE power banks, but they're pretty expensive. I don't know of any cheap solutions to provide actual 802.3 AF PoE power in the field. Well, you could get a battery and an inverter and you could plug a PoE power injector into the inverter, but that's cheating. Now, many people who are powering this are going to power it off of DC. And if you go that direction, the simplest thing to do is gonna to be to just cut a USB cable, cut the end off it, break out the five volt and the ground wires, they're almost always gonna be red and black, and then solder them or otherwise connect them to these two pins on the Raspberry Pi, and then plug it into a USB power bank, and voila, it gets five volts and it powers up. Uh, but I know what you're thinking. 
you're thinking, Joshua, the Raspberry Pi has a USB-C port. I can just power it off the USB-C port. And <laughs> why would I go through all this nonsense? <laughs> the reason is that that USB-C port is going to be occupied talking to the goggles. And so it can't also plug into a power bank, but there is a way around it. And the way around it is to do this. You make your own spliced dual ended USB cable with power going to a power bank and you cut the power wire going to the goggles. You plug the USB C into the Raspberry Pi and voila, yada, yada, yada. That's kind of a pain in the ass, although it's actually probably the best way to do this. I don't know. I'm just going to use PoE. So now we've addressed the issue of how to power up the Raspberry Pi. The next step is we have to prepare an SD card. The Raspberry Pi runs its operating system off an SD card. And thankfully, Cosmos Streamer has provided the exact SD card image that we need. We can just download it from this link. Um, and notice uh, that I am on the DJI Goggles 2 slash Integra page. I'm not sure if the file is different. I think it's the same firmware no matter which goggles you're using, although there are different license keys and we'll get to that later in the video. Um, but we'll download this zip archive and uh, it contains this file, CosmoStreamer ngsdcard.img and we'll just drag that to the desktop. Ooh, it's a beefy one. It's taken a minute to, un to unzip. And then we're gonna download a piece of software called Win32 Disk Imager. I'll put a link in the video description, of course. Uh, and we will select the image file from the desktop, cosmostreamer.img. We will get a SD card of at least eight gig. Ooh, eight gig. Ooh, I got 32 gig, baby. We'll get an SD card. We'll put that in our machine. We will make sure to select the correct drive letter because otherwise you will overwrite the drive that you select. You want to do that with some valuable data. Uh, and that's it, I believe. We will just hit write from the image file to the device. Drive Y. Yes, that's my SD card. Right. Target device Y. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, because I can clearly see here that Drive Y used to be my... Uh, DVR on my HD Zero goggles drive Y. Yes. Next, we're going to get ourselves a display. I'm using this little display for the sake of making this video, but you can use any television or computer monitor that has an HDMI input. And we're going to connect it to the HDMI output on the Raspberry Pi. I know. I thought those were USB micros as well. They're not. They are micro HDMI, and you will need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable or an adapter. And I believe the instructions say that you need to use the uh, one that is closest to the USB port. They are not interchangeable. And having done that, we will plug in the Raspberry Pi and see what happens. First thing I wanna see is the SD card status LED. Yeah, this green LED right here is blinkity, 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 and that's a good sign. That means that it's like booting up. We may have to wait a minute before we see anything happen on the screen. I didn't have it plugged all the way in. I am dumb. <laughs> oh, it's doing things. Oh, Cosmo Streamer, it's alive. That's good. Now that the Cosmo Streamer is like alive, the next thing we need to do is connect to it and manage it and like use it. And the simplest way to do that is going to be to connect to the Cosmo Streamer Wi Fi network. It broadcasts its own Wi Fi network. The password is 123451345. 1, and if we look down here, we can just see Cosmo Streamer right here. That's a Wi Fi network you can connect to with your phone or with your web browser. Now, if you connect to the Wi Fi network, then you just go to any of these URLs. Uh, I think the easiest to remember is cosmostreamer.local and it will come up. Let's try that. And it did, it worked. Cosmostreamer.local worked, perfect. Um, in my case, I am plugged into the ethernet jack uh, and plugged into my home network switch. I'm not using the Wi-Fi, but you can see it works the same either way. The next thing we need to do is update the firmware. And in order to do that, we will need uh, the Cosmos Streamer to have internet access. So you'll need to plug it into your home network somehow. And we'll do that by going down here in the lower right. We'll go to device settings and firmware update available. Open chapter system. Here is system right here and firmware update. Download latest firmware file. I have to manually download it. Okay. Oh, it is downloading insecure download block. Oh, I think we're going to keep it. And then choose file, downloads, cosmostreamerng.sruswoof, upload file. Okay. 
device will be rebooted. Great. And here on the screen, oh, well, I missed it. Here on the screen for just a second, it said firmware updating, and then it is now rebooting. As I said earlier, Cosmos Streamer is not free, and the license key is not inexpensive, $150, sheesh. And that is $150 for the goggles too, and the Integra. If you also want to do the V2 goggles and the V1 goggles, that's another license key that you have to buy. And there's a bunch of other licenses you could buy too, like the DJI Pocket, the DJI Osmo, DJI Fly Drones, the DJI Phantom, DJI Osmo Pro, et cetera, et cetera. You would need a different license key for every single one of these devices you wanted to use with Cosmo Streamer. Now, if all you want to do is get video out of your DJI goggles and you've got the V1 or the V2 goggles, you probably should just use the existing solutions like this website, fpvout.com, is the old open source uh, project that can get video out of the V1 or the V2 goggles. There's an Android app called Digiview, I believe it's called. They are free and they work pr pretty well. Um, but for the goggles too, only Cosmos Streamer can do this today as far as I know. And it's worth keeping in mind that Cosmos Streamer has additional functionality. Like for example, well, sure it can output video over HDMI, but it can also stream video over Wi-Fi or over an ethernet jack. So if you're trying to do some kind of big event where you need network streaming, Cosmos Streamer is pretty freaking full featured. But for just a simple hobbyist who just wants to like get HDMI out, eh. Maybe it's overkill. I am about to bite the bullet though and buy this license because I asked Cosmos Dreamer for a free license and I just, I waited to the last minute and they haven't answered me and I don't want to wait and make this video. So maybe they'll refund me later if they decide they would like to donate a license to this video because $150 is a lot of freaking money. Anyway. $150 DIY license for goggles to slash Integra. Okay, that is correct. Don't you need this? Don't you need the license? Board ID. So I think they need my board ID. Copy. I think they need my board ID. There's my board ID and oh no. Is it gonna auto generate it? Please auto generate it so I don't have to wait to finish. Hey there, it's Joshua from the future. I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that almost immediately after I sent that email, the Cosmos Streamer developer re replied, uh, so I didn't have to wait very long. And the way it would normally work is he would send a PayPal request uh, and you would pay him via PayPal. Uh, but since he recognized my name, <laughs> uh, he sent me two licenses for free. Uh, one for the V1, V2 goggles, one for the goggles 2 and Integra. So thank you to him for that. And that will not in any way affect my opinion of, this is a tutorial, not a review anyway. So there's no, there's no bias there, but now you know. Uh, once you've got the licenses, uh, it's just this text of strings, which I'm not gonna show you in case somehow there's a way that that could be compromised. Um, and I don't think you could because like the licensing is tied to the physical hardware right? It's tied to the physical hardware. So like, even if you were to have my license key, you wouldn't have the actual hardware ID from my Raspberry Pi. But it does make me wonder, like, if I lose this Raspberry Pi, am I just shit out of luck on those $300 worth of licenses? If I were to message him and say, hey, I lost my Raspberry Pi, can you reissue me licenses? It doesn't seem like there's any way for him to like retract the licenses because I don't think they phone home or anything. It's just, I have this hardware ID. He generates a license for that. I don't know. I wonder what his policy is on that. So we're gonna copy paste this license key, copy. We're gonna head on over to Cosmos Streamer and we'll go device settings, license, and then we'll paste the license key in here. Hello, there we go. And we hit install license key and I'm not really sure, like it just kind of sits there and I don't really know if it's worked or not, but there you go. How can I see the licenses that are currently on it? I don't know. But I, what I do know is that I no longer have the error message here saying, oh, unlicensed, which means we can find out if it works. And in order to do that, I will take my goggles too, plug in a USB-C. I will take this USB-C and plug it into the Cosmo streamer and bonk. This is a USB OTG adapter. And sometimes this is necessary. I don't know why. Oh, and it's a USB-A. So uh, sometimes USB-C to C doesn't work. Let's Let's try that. Uh, USB OTG adapter in the goggles and USB-C 
on the Cosmo Streamer. Let's see if that does anything. Oh, oh, that has done something. Oh, holy crap, it's working. And my quadcopter is beeping. That's annoying. Hold on, let me power cycle my quadcopter. Uh, okay, my first question is, how's the latency? Uh, that's not bad. Like, it's a little bit. I don't know if you could fly off it, but it's not grotesque. Honestly, that's not bad. That's better than I thought it was going to be. What now? I don't know. Like, what the hell? I can record? Okay, I can start recording. We're recording on Cosmo Streamer here. We're... Oh my gosh, this is going over the... This is going over the network. This is not via HDMI input. I'm streaming directly over the ethernet or the Wi-Fi to my computer. That's kind of cool. <gasps> oh my gosh. I could just broadcast this Cosmo Streamer Wi-Fi network and then while I was flying, people could just tune in like with their phones. What else can this do? I'm manipulating the DJI camera. Holy crap. Oh, that, has that worked? <gasps> Oh, oh, it is working. Oh no, it is working. Wow. That's kind of cool. We could change the settings in the drone from the computer. So like you could theoretically have one person flying the drone and one person adjusting the image as they fly. Oh, video transcoding, live video transcoding. That's going to stress this thing. <laughs> Oh my God, we can restream. Oh, wow. And and then just VLC. Oh, wow. Really? What about RTMP? Yeah, oh my God. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on. I'm getting lost in the weeds here. Uh, this was never intended to be a like Cosmo Streamer deep dive or tutorial. I would not presume to try to teach you something that I only just learned five minutes ago. Uh, that would be insulting. Um, what this video is, is, hey, do you wanna get video out of your Goggles 2 or Integra? Cosmo Streamer is basically the only way, unless you wanna spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a DJI Pro controller that still can't do half the things Cosmo Streamer can do, like stream over a network, stream over Wi-Fi, restream as RTSP or RTMP or other, it do all that nonsense. And it's way cheaper. Um, do you want to do all of that stuff with any other DJI device, including the V1 or V2 goggles? Cosmo Streamer. Um, for the price of a Raspberry Pi and not that much more, you can get all this function. Oh yeah, $150 license key. <laughs> you can get all this functionality. There's a link in the video description below. I don't get any kickback or anything for doing this, uh, but I think it's a really cool project and it's created a capability that simply isn't available any other way. And if that capability is for you, then this project is for you as well. Uh, if you have any tips for me as a more experienced Cosmo Streamer user of cool things that I could try to do or, you know, whatever, put them in the comments. I'm going to keep trying to play with this and maybe I'll follow up with a little bit more of a tutorial if there's interest. On the other hand, if you have the V1 or the V2 goggles, you do not need to pay hundreds of dollars for this license. There is a free project that I made a video about and I'd like to link you to a video about it. That video talks about a product that no longer exists called the Axis Flying Box. I'm pretty sure that's been discontinued, but that video also talks about free options for getting video out of your V1 or V2 goggles. Sorry, doesn't work with the G2 or the Integra, but if you have those goggles, you might wanna check that video out and I'll put a card on screen to where you can find that. I'll see you there.